Hey everyone, Mike here and in this video I'm going to show you some of the most important differences between Android 4.4 KitKat and Android 4.3 Jellybean. We have the Nexus 5 running KitKat here and the Nexus 7 2013 running Jellybean. First things first, we'll start with the boot animation, which was slightly redesigned for the new Android version as you can see here. Then, as soon as the device is finished booting up, you'll be greeted by the lock screens. Again, the one on the Nexus 5 has been slightly tweaked. For instance, there's now an arrow pointing up in the bottom part of the screen, suggesting something will happen if you'll slide it up. Indeed it does, Google Now is launched. But the same thing happened on Jellybean as well. However, on Jellybean we had a less intuitive icon down here. As an addition, there's also this camera icon in the lower left corner of the Nexus 5 screen, which again suggests that swiping from the right will launch the camera. Besides this, both lock screens offer support for widgets, as long as you've enabled those in the settings. Out of the box, they are turned off on most devices. Oh, and before I forget, the lock screen media controls have been slightly revamped, now supporting full screen album covers and the ability to scrub inside the track by long pressing the play pause button. Moving on, unlocking the two gadgets will reveal the home screens. There are 5 of them on the Nexus 7 and there's no option to add more, from what I know. On the Nexus 5, there's only a single home screen by default, but you can add an unlimited number of new screens by grabbing an app and moving it to the right. The most left home screen on KitKat is reserved for Google Now which can be populated with your desired cards or can be turned off. But all the other home screens are strongly integrated with Google Now as well, which can be launched by simply saying OK Google from any of these home panels. Those features were missing on Jellybean. Besides this, you will notice that the wallpaper stretches under the Android buttons and the system tray on KitKat, and it's also visible in the app drawer, again, novelty is brought over by the new Android version. Speaking of the app drawer, it only contains apps on Android 4.4, as there's no longer another tab for widgets at the top. In order to add widgets on KitKat, you need to tap and keep pressed on the home screen for this new set of options to be launched. From here, you can rearrange the home screens if you want to, you can change the wallpapers, add widgets or mingle with the home screen settings. I should also add that there's no way to delete any of the home panels manually, but any screen will be automatically deleted if you'll get rid of all the apps and widgets on it, just like on iOS. Ok, so as you've seen by now, there aren't many obvious changes brought on by KitKat. In fact, most additions are either small tweaks or cosmetic changes of features we've seen in the past. There are some exceptions, but we'll talk about them in a bit. The design polishes are however visible in many places. The main Android controls have been slightly repainted, the system tray icons, the default keyboard, the clock app and so on. The blue used for many Jellybean interfaces has been ditched for a simpler, flatter design with shades of white, grey and black. And I for one like this new face of KitKat. Anyway, let's get to what has actually changed. For instance, the dialer, which has been completely revamped. It's a smart dialer, of course, and besides the new aspect, it has gotten more versatile, as it closely integrates with Google Now, which means that it acts like your own version of Yellow Pages, either when you want to find a pizza place nearby, for example, or someone who's not in your contacts list is calling you, and the system will grab details about that number from the web, if available. There's also a new Hangouts app, which is now the only messaging app within Android 4.4 and takes care of your SMS conversation as well. That can be a bit confusing, especially if you're using Hangouts for your Google Plus chats too. That's why Google allows you to change the default SMS application for something else if you want to. In terms of apps, both Android versions come with all the Google services pre-installed and not much else. But there are some slight differences here as well. For example, there's no longer a Google Currents app pre-installed on the Nexus 5, but there's this app called Quick Office, very useful if you want to edit documents or presentations on your device. Quick Office is also closely integrated with Google Drive. Besides that, some apps can now stretch over the entire screen surface on Android 4.4, like Google's Playbook. You can see how it behaves on Jellybean and how nicer it looks on KitKat, with the main menu and the system tray completely hidden. In the future, I'm sure we'll see more apps benefiting from this feature. Moving on, the notification and multitasking windows haven't changed much, but multitasking between many opened apps is now smoother. In fact, Android 4.4 is advertised to run properly on lower-end handsets as well, as it has lower hardware demands. The tray of quick toggles that can be accessed on Android phones by swiping from the top with two fingers has been slightly redesigned as well and has got a new icon with KitKat, Location. Hitting it will take you to the Location tab in the Settings, where you have this new Location Mode options. And speaking of the settings, there are a few novelties offered by Android 4.4 here, like Home, which lets you easily switch between several different launchers, as long as you have them installed of course, and there's also Tap and Pay, designed to make wireless payments simpler, and Printing, with support for cloud and internet connected printers. Ok, these are the notable differences between Android 4.4 KitKat and Android 4.4 Jellybean. There are other small ones, but hopefully I did not miss anything important. If I did, and if you have any questions or anything to add to this clip, let me know in the comments below. For now, it's time to end this video. 
Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon and in the meantime enjoy the short comparison between the easter eggs on these two Android versions. Catch you later.